I have an opportunity to make a modification to these 304 stainless steel parts. It's an uplift uh, prevention device. And you can see it's machined at kind of a funky angle here. And we're having some issues where this surface is making contact with the side of the rail head. Let me see if I can find a piece of rail and show you exactly what these do. So here's a rather nasty piece of ordinary car rail. Yes, I do have things like this sitting around the farm. Now these devices, they mount on a moving bridge. And they would come up and catch the underside of the rail head with that cam follower in the event that the bridge would ever try to lift. Now they mount on this surface back here, but obviously they're running a little bit too close to the sides of the railhead. And so the plant asked me to make a relief cut on the back side. I brought uh, half of them back with me from the plant. Actually, there's a total of 64. This is about 32. And I'll show you what I have to do with these. Now they were so kind as to scribe a line where the bottom edge of the support structure is. But basically we're going to take and machine a quarter inch deep step across this entire surface. So we're basically going to remove all this material so that when the, the piece mounts back on its surface it's sitting outboard so we're going to move quarter inch outboard and hopefully alleviate the scrubbing that we're seeing on this uh, this inside face now i'm not going to machine 64 of them but i thought it was a good opportunity to test uh, with the uh, three quarter inch carbide roughing mill and a nice heavy cut you know quarter inch deep cut in some somewhat difficult material 304. You never see the YouTubers demonstrating anything with 304. They demonstrate with aluminum or brass because it's just, you know, quick and easy and, and goes like clockwork. So we'll take a nice uh, heavy cut. Uh, I'll have to use some lubricant and uh, see how it goes. I've set up to do a fairly hefty cut on this 304 stainless part. It's got to be a quarter inch deep and ultimately two inches across the face. Uh, I'm going to use the three quarter inch rougher finisher. I'm going to try to do this full depth, full width passes until I get back to that line. First thing I have to do is touch off on the side and set a zero on the DRO. And then I'm going to set up my table feed and um, start out at about three to four inches a minute and see how it goes. I can hear it just ticking the high spots. There I have contact. Zeroing my quill. Let's get a fresh spot on the face here and come up until we touch again. And there we're just just skimming the surface. So now I'm going to come down 250 thousandths, which is two and a half cranks. 100, 200, 250. And since this is a fairly hefty cut, I'm going to snug the quill lock just a little bit. And let's get some lubricant on this. I do not have any um, lube system on this mill yet, so I'm going to just manually add. And we're going to be starting out at 
three inches a minute. Let's see how this sounds. Smoke is good, right? You get a fresh supply of lubricant. That chatters when it's going through the bolt holes. I think I'm going to slow down the feed just a little bit. See what that does to our noise. Two and five eighths inches per minute. Sounds a little better. With this pass, I'm, I'm past the mounting holes, so it should be a little quieter anyway. Final pass, total of two inches wide, quarter inch deep.
Well, let's clean that up a bit and have a look at it. If you look real close here, the parts started to lift. So I'm going to have to, that's kind of warm. I'm going to have to come back across this uh, m more passes and just clean that up. Okay, now we'll take a light cleanup cut and level things off. This cut's going to get progressively heavier as we move across the surface. Since we're taking such light passes, I'm going to increase the uh, spindle RPM back up to about 1200 and increase the feed speed and let's see if we can eject those chips a little better. Probably should have run it at this speed, at the full depth. Here's our finished piece. If I do say so myself, that came out pretty nice. It's better than the factory finish, which we accepted when, we, when these parts were made. So let's see how we did. Now, this edge was just a kind of a saw cut finish. I don't know, maybe this was a high def plasma cut. Looks like we're at 195, or excuse me, 1950. Let's check that in a couple places. 208. One ninety eight, one nine nine eight. One nine nine eight. So either we uh, go a little deeper here or there's more likely the original surface um, takes somewhat of a little dive here and then uh, 
I was machining parallel to what we clamped. So a little bit deeper there. Not quite as nice on the, what would have been the side of the mill. And there's an area there where we got a chip embedded. There was a lot of, you know, recutting of chips despite my best efforts to keep things brushed out. But um, a coolant system definitely would help flood things away or compressed air, and we'll address that later. But I hope you enjoyed that. This was just going to be used as an example for the fabricator to make all the modifications to the rest of those pieces, and uh, I'm going to run those up to him now. So catch you next time on Engineer's Workshop. Thanks for watching.